Hello, my name is Justice Reed, and I'm a 23-year-old social media influencer from the United States who currently lives here in Croatia. I'm sorry I can't be with you today in person as I planned, but due to conflicts in my schedule, I'm going to have to reach you through video. Despite this challenge, my message remains the same, and I hope to meet you all in person next year. Today, I'm going to teach you about social media and how it's changed my life and how it can change yours for the better. I was raised in South Dakota, a big state about the size of Romania, but with a small population of only 900,000 people. It's mostly full of farmland and wide open space. My parents are evangelical Christians who didn't believe in the U.S. education system, so they never sent me to school. They decided that they were going to be responsible for my education themselves and school me at home. Unfortunately, I was a bad student. I couldn't sit still, didn't study, and took a little interest in anything they tried to teach me. After graduating, I never went to college. What I consider my real education started when I was 14 years old. My first job was working for my dad at his coffee shop downtown. I lasted about three months before he fired me. That sent me down a road of working just about every job you can imagine from age 14 to 18. I worked every type of sales job, hospitality, retail. The worst job I ever had was when I was 15 years old working for the county, picking up dead animals off the side of the road. At age 19, I enlisted in the U.S. Army National Guard as a soldier. Training was hard, but as soon as it was over, after six months, I came home and bought my first home at the age of 19 with the money I saved. Over the next year, I remodeled the whole home from the ground up. I'd always seen myself as someone who was completely logical, but now, as a single adult, I faced extreme boredom and decided to embrace creativity. So, I started writing music, and I wanted to share it with the world. But how? I had no music industry connections and no marketing experience. Then, a coworker introduced me to TikTok. I made my first video that night, in January of 2021. It took about five minutes, and I got 370 views. I couldn't believe it. Nothing I had ever done had been seen by that many people. I was hooked. I needed to learn everything I could about the app and how to win it. I started making videos every day with one goal. Outwork everyone else on the platform. No shortcuts. Within a month, I posted a video and it was massively viral. The success earned over 2.7 million views. To this day, it's still my most liked video of all time. It was about a car, of all things. From that one video, I went from 300 to 75 thousand followers basically overnight. I made videos for a while about my life until a few months later I made a video about another car that went viral. It was about how I wanted to buy a Yugo. That video didn't go viral in America, but in the Balkans. All of a sudden people from Serbia, Croatia, and Bosnia were watching my videos and my old American audience was outnumbered by this new Balkan one. There was no going back. I started making videos about Balkan culture, music, and food. I served my first two years in the army doing paperwork while I was making these videos. It wasn't exactly my dream job. But my last two years, I got the opportunity to run all of the organization's social media profiles and increase my skills. I posted more than 250 videos in a year on our old army page, and it grew from 3,000 followers to 850,000. I also was able to take some vacation time during that period, and I visited Ljubljana, Slovenia, Zagreb, Croatia, and Belgrade, Serbia on three different trips, which only strengthened my bond to the Balkans. I had the support of my friends, my family, my house was finished, I had a good car and made decent salary. But as my military contract came to an end, I decided to make a radical decision. I sold everything and I moved to the Balkans, with basically no plan other than to make videos on social media about the experience, and hope for the best. On July 4th, 2023, American Independence Day, I landed in Belgrade with everything I owned packed into a suitcase. I had escaped the familiar and embraced adventure. Today, it's gotten me more than 1.2 million followers across my social media platforms, earned tens of millions of views, and I make a living making videos on social media. I was able to achieve this because of my research, experience, and bravery. 
And I'm here to share that research and experience with you. You'll not find this information anywhere else, so I suggest you listen closely. Now, the internet is run by algorithms. An algorithm is a digital machine whose job it is to recommend you content that it thinks you'll like. All social media platforms use algorithms. LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. If you open any of these sites or apps, you'll find a homepage tailor-made for you with content that it thinks you'll find interesting. As a consumer, algorithms are great because they make it easier to find content that'll interest you. They can also be quite addictive and dangerous. As a creator, it's even better because the only people who will ever see your content are people who the algorithm knows will like it. There are three types of content you can post on social media. There is text, photos, and short videos. Text is simple. Uh, you write up a blog post or uh, tweet something on Twitter. Photos would be something like Instagram is mostly created for photo content. And then there's short videos. Short videos was pioneered by TikTok as a platform as a way to sort of spread your message or connect with your friends. Algorithms love short videos more than any other type of content. If you use just pictures or text, the algorithm is significantly less likely to show what you've made to people. Uh, basically, even Twitter and Instagram, who were made for just text and just photos, have now shifted to be completely about short videos. The reason is because videos have audio. It engages another part of your senses. They're passive. They just happen. I don't have to read. I don't have to focus. It just happens. There's movement, something to grab your attention. And they're completely universal. Everybody understands humans, how they move, how they talk, things like that. The best algorithm of all is the original video creator, which is TikTok. Uh, basically, TikTok as will send your videos to 10 people. If they like it, it'll send it to 100. If 100 people like it, it'll send it to 1,000, and you get hundreds of thousands or millions of views. But why does that matter? What are views? The internet is in a real place. It's not like you can walk into Instagram like it's a cafe. Think of it like this. On the other end of every view, every like or comment is a person. And like all people, that person is looking for a personal connection. Personal connection on social media is different than in real life. It's easy. The person creating the videos, in this case, you, entertains and inspires the viewer, and all the viewer has to do in return is watch and enjoy. This is what they call a parasocial relationship or a one-sided relationship. This type of relationship can lead a viewer to think that they know and understand the video creator on a personal level. It's the easiest relationship they've ever had. Thus, when the creator makes a recommendation for a product, service, or presents an idea, then it's as if, as if the viewer has received a recommendation from a close friend. Someone they know really well. Right now, I have more than one million people who view me this way online. That's more people than I could become close to within a hundred full lifetimes combined together. That's why social media creators are called influencers. Influence like this has never been possible until this point in history on platforms like this. It's never been easier for regular people to grasp the power of social media. The first problem with posting on social media is luck. I always say that when you post on social media, it's like playing the lottery. You can't win if you don't play. So if there's one thing you can take away from this talk, it's create videos. Even if they break all the rules I'm gonna tell you, or they don't take any of my advice, you will be more successful if you post than if you don't. If you post online consistently, you're bound to hit the jackpot in the form of hundreds of thousands or millions of views. Find a consistent posting schedule that you can stick with. I post every day, but that's too much for most people. So, if you think you can consistently post once, twice, or three times a week and stick with it, then that would be best for you. The algorithm does most of the heavy, heavy lifting even though it's not perfect. It will find an audience for any type of video eventually. If you post videos about any topic regardless of your technique, skills, or rules followed 100 times, 
at least one of those videos will go viral. But how do you strengthen your odds at winning? One success from 100, 100 attempts, that's pretty harsh. Uh, most would say it's not worth that much work. I actually promise my clients that the minimum views a video I post for them will get is one quarter of a million views, which is a crazy high number to guarantee every time. But I've never not reached it for a client. My secret, hard work and the scientific method. You make a video in three steps. First you write, and then you film, and then you edit. Writing is the most important part and can be the most difficult. But I think you'll find that all of you have some experience with writing, whether it be in school or for work or things like that. Filming can be challenging, but I think you'll find that most of you have those skills. Everyone has a smartphone and has filmed a video before. This wasn't the case 20 years ago, but now everyone has that kind of skill. Editing is something that most people don't know how to do and will take some real sort of doubling down on that kind of knowledge. It's important that you just do it. You write the video, you film the video, and you give editing your best shot. It's important that you know your limits. Don't write a video you can't film. Don't film a video you can't edit. I edit, film, and write everything on my phone completely 100% and it's what I recommend that you do as well. It's the easiest way to get things done in a quick, reasonable fashion. Videos must follow five rules if they're going to be consistently successful. Violate these rules at your own risk. You can make a viral video of somebody falling down the stairs, jumping out a window or explosions, but that's not gonna get you an audience. It's not gonna sort of create that relationship where you can make a living doing this sort of thing or make any real impact. The first thing you're gonna to have to do to build an audience in a video is show a face. It doesn't have to be your face, but it has to be somebody's face. If there's no faces in a video, there's nobody to connect to. Sometimes animals in videos can play this role as well, a face of an animal, but it's gotta be somebody's face. Somebody's face must be in the video for it to be a success. It's called social media for a reason. Make a social video. Number two, talking must also be in the video. If nobody is talking in the video, then you are excluding one of the five senses that humans have. It makes the video too, too hard to focus on. I have to look at my screen. But if somebody's talking, I can just listen to the video and enjoy it. Talking is necessary. It's called social media for a reason. Text. Text must be on the screen for the exact opposite reason of talking. Most people watch social media videos in crowded spaces, like waiting in line, you're on the subway, or you're paying attention to your phone when you should be paying attention to the people at the dinner table. With text, I can have the volume all the way off and I can still understand what's happening in the video. Number four, it has to have a fast pace. A video needs to move quickly to keep the audience interested whether that be in the form of how you talk, how you present your information, or in the fast cuts in the editing. Social media is super competitive. Basically, uh, there's millions of other people making videos just like you, and if your video bores the audience, the audience is just gonna flick their finger and swipe to the next person. The video must, and the fifth and final rule is that it must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. This is a classic storytelling rule. It's how all writing is done and should be done. It goes like this. When you were in school writing an essay, you may have heard this. The beginning, you tell them what you're going to tell them. In the middle, you tell them. And in the end, you tell them what you told them. The beginning could also mean if you're talking directly to the audience, looking them right into the camera lens, you can say in the beginning, I want to show you something in the beginning. And in the middle, here is the thing. And in the end, a summary of your thoughts about the thing. Or maybe you ask the audience, what do you think of what I just showed you? You have to remember the core of entertainment. This should be pervasive throughout your video. Moving on to something that is really important. You can write a video that is boring even though it contains all of the previous things because it's not entertaining. 
entertainment stems from three core elements. It stems from humor, making people laugh, drama, making people wonder what's going to happen next, and education, teaching them something new or something interesting that they didn't know before. Using humor, drama, and education, and following the five rules, then you can create a truly viral video. One viral video is great, but what about three, five, ten, or a hundred? As you continue to make videos following these simple rules, you will find lots of success online, and I guarantee it. Video making, whether it's 60 seconds or 60 minutes, is always an exercise in empathy. Who is your audience and what do they want to see? The video doesn't necessarily have to appeal to you, even. All that matters is that you keep your target demographic in mind. How old are they? What are their hopes and dreams? What do they aspire to be? These are all important questions. Put yourself in the shoes of the viewer when you make videos and know your limits. I repeat this again. Don't overwork yourself. Don't burn yourself out. Focus on your strengths. Follow the rules. Take my advice, but focus on your strengths. What are you good at? What message do you have to tell the world? Tell it. We want to hear it. But when you tell it, I want to see you. I want to hear you. And I want you to tell it in the right package with a beginning, a middle, and an end. In a humorous, dramatic, and educational way. It takes a particular mindset, knowledge, and skills for social media success and lots of practice. The first thing you should do is go and create things. And if you truly try, if you really put in the hard work and you're really passionate and you seek knowledge and you have discipline, I think you'll find success just as I have. Not anybody can do what I do, but much more can do what I do than think they can. If you don't want to create content and you're watching this video and you don't want to make videos, then at least this video should in, uh, engage you and entertain you in a way that now you know what to look for when you watch videos on your phone. I hope this talk has inspired you to create things, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thanks for having me.